Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now we are in the month of May. Today is the second day. And like I told you, God wants us to come into his image. Now, because these are, this is what he has actually planned for. And so we are going to be sharing this month or, or let's see how far the Lord will take us on the image of God. Praise God. That's what we're going to be sharing with you on. But before going to today's broadcast, can we make demands for our daily bread? It's a new month, so expect bigger things. Praise God. Yeah, according to your faith. I remember I told you yesterday, let your mind be free from every limitation and bondage. So join me right now in faith even as we believe God for bigger things. Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Turn your Bibles with me to our main text, and that's in Ephesians chapter 2. I read the scripture to you yesterday. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. Ephesians 2 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We are his workmanship. He created us unto good works which he prepared ahead of time so those good works were prepared ahead of time so that we should walk in them and this makes you understand that we are a people made to fulfill prophecies every child of God is born for one reason to fulfill prophecies now, the main prophecy we've been called to fulfill is the prophecy from day one. And I'm going to be showing you something from the book of Genesis. Let's, let's look at what God said from day one as regard the creation of man. So let's go to Genesis chapter one. I pray the Lord will give you understanding to this because if you understand this then you are ready to take the world i'm telling you the truth praise god then verse genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 then god said let us make man in our image now i want you to understand it says god said let us make, let us, let us, take note of that. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Now look at what he says next. That let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, all over, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth notice he says let us make man in our image now first and foremost because if you need to understand the image of god you need to understand the one who's saying he wants to make man after his image because if you don't understand the one that you're going to be made after you will not even know what you should look like you see that now? So who was talking? Who was talking? And then he said, let us. So who's the us? Praise God. You know, I've heard different things. You know, some people say God was talking to the angels. So uh, no, he wasn't talking to the angels. Praise God. So, so who was God talking to? You know, who was God talking to? He says, let us make man in our image. I'm sure you. Because if you don't understand this one, the image of the one who's talking, you will not even understand what man 
was made to look like. Now, some of sometimes you just imagine, I know this, you know, so what is it? Hey, listen, listen. Whenever the word of God is coming, you have to open your heart to listen and pay attention. If not, you miss the crux of the matter. So he says, let us make man in our image. I want to show you something first from the book of Revelation. John, in the book of Revelation, was speaking. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. I want you to look at this. Now, this is John writing this book. And he said something very interesting here that I want to show you. Chapter 1, verse 4. He said, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is, take note, peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. Take notes. If you don't greet this carefully, you will not understand what he's saying. So he says, grace to you and peace. Is blessing them now. And then he now says, From him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler over the kings of the earth. Did you see that? John says, I'm writing you this letter, so I'm bringing you grace and peace from the one who was, who is, and who is to come. And then he now says, from the seven spirits that are before that one's throne. And then he now says, from Jesus Christ. So he said, I'm bringing you this letter from these three personalities. That's what John was saying here. I'm bringing you this letter from these three personalities. Now it takes us back to, to Genesis when he says, one spoke and said let us make man so the question then is who was doing the speaking and who was doing the listening so who, who spoke and who was he referring to referring to as the us i'll show you another scripture now today we're doing a bit of bible study for his god and i told you the difference between word study and bible study first john now you know the scripture Every child of God knows the scripture. But I need to show something to you. First John chapter 5 and verse 7. Now, the old King James, because it's important you understand this. The old King James, verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. There are three that bear record in heaven. And who are the three? The Father, notice, he says, the Word and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. There are three that bear record in heaven. Take note of the word. They bear record. Record. There is a record that they bear. Now, record can also mean testimony. So you see some translations refer to it as there are three that bear testimony in heaven. Now, but then he's referring specifically to a particular thing, not just in everything. Here he's referring to something they, the three of them are holding on to. Now, what is this record that they are holding on to? It says there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Now let me explain something here because he said let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let him have dominion. Now the one who spoke is the same one because in Genesis chapter 1 I pray God gives you understanding. I'm going to be slow on this. The one who spoke 
is the same one who was speaking in the whole of Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis, he's called, in Genesis chapter 1, he's referred to as God. Now, just so that you understand, we go, let's go back to that Genesis chapter 1. I need to show you this. It is this will help you um, study your Bible more closely and understand. So now you see in Genesis chapter 1, everything he was saying there. Now, for, from verse 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, right? And the earth was without form and void, and the Spirit of God was one. Then, verse 2, then God said, okay? And then, and uh, verse 4, verse 3, then God said, verse 4, and God saw. Verse 5, God called. Verse 6, then God said. Verse 7, thus God made. Verse 8, and God called. Verse 9, then God said. See? Um, verse 10, and God called. Now you see, it keeps just saying God, 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 God. Okay? And so it is the same thing when we get to verse 26. Then it says, and God said, let us. So who spoke? God. Now this one that is referred to as God is the same one that Jesus referred to as the Father. Now, you, you heard Jesus made a statement. He said, no, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. He used the word, no one comes to the Father but by me. And the same Jesus spoke uh, in, in the book of John, and he said, that's in John chapter 6, Jesus said, no one has seen the Father. He said, not that anyone has seen the Father. Not that anyone has seen the Father. Now also John speaking in John chapter 1, he said, no one has seen God at any time. Now when he says no one has seen God at any time, he's referring to the Father. No one has seen him, and hey, no one will ever see him. He's not seeable. <laughs> God. Now this particularly is talking about who? God, or the one we refer to as the Father. Now, just like John said in 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, there are three. They bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. So we have the Father, and that's the one I'm describing to you, which no one sees. Then we have the Word. The Word, thank you, Holy Spirit. The Word is the one that He carries out an operation of the Godhead. And funny enough, it is the word that is seen. Anytime God manifests himself on the earth, it's the word that becomes flesh. And he's done that several times. The Godhead walking into earth. The one who, who we see, the one who, we, who manifests physically for men to see and relate to it is the one that is called the word and it's been there from the beginning you remember in the garden of eden they, they they heard the voice of god walking in the garden in the pool of the day now abraham met him melchizedek for example is the word of god made flesh that's the manifestation of the word. And whenever he comes, he comes to deliver a message. So he, he met Abraham, he blessed him, and then he commanded him concerning the tithe. And that's another day talk. But Mel Melchizedek is the manifestation of the word of God. See, And then Abraham met Genesis chapter 18. Three men came to Abraham, met three men. And one of them, the Bible says, is the Lord. Now, those were physical people Abraham saw. So one was the Lord, two were angels. 
Now, who was that the Lord that he made? That's the Word of God made flesh. Okay, so any any time Joshua met him also, when he saw the angel draw, with a drawn sword, that's the manifestation he chose to manifest that. That was also the Word of God made flesh. So we see all these manifestations even in the Old Testament. And then something happened, like John described in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14. It says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Now what, what happened there? This is the first time the Word of God made flesh is dwelling. But that's not the first time the Word of God was being made flesh. I want you to understand this. Several times, and that, that, this is just a record that we were given. But I always tell you this, this record does not contain everything. It's good. There are, I, I believe there are several appearances of, or several manifestations of the Word made flesh that is not even recorded. See? But then God was dealing with men. And what makes you think God was only dealing with Abraham and that lineage in the whole world? What makes you think so? What makes you think God was not dealing with some people in Africa? Yes, there was Africa in the days of Abraham. Remember, there was Africa. Africa has existed for so long. What makes you think God was not dealing with people here? So we just have this mentality that, oh, it's only Israel. And no, no, no. The good thing about them is they were able to keep their record in that systematic way. Maybe others didn't pay attention to keeping records. See? So that's by the way. But then, you see all this manifestation of God is the Word of God. So now I've talked to you about the Father. I've talked to you about the Word. The Word is the one we see and we relate with. And then there is the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit is the one that brings forth the presence of God. He's the one that every effect of God that you see is the Holy Spirit that brings that to being. That He's the one that, that's, that he, he, he does that work. Praise God. So now, here's the operation of this tree. The Father has never seen. The Word manifests, manifests Himself so we can see Him. Then the Holy Spirit, you can't see the Holy Spirit. See, even if you go to heaven, you will not see the Father. So when Jesus made that statement, because He is the Word made flesh, He says, I am the way. No man can come to the Father but by me, which is simply true. There is no seeing of God. The only way you can see God is to hear His voice. That's what Jesus meant, is to hear his voice. It's not even that you will hold Jesus. So I always say this, you know, to believers, like, it will shock you that you will get to heaven today and you will not even see Jesus. No, you won't see Jesus. But see, even in heaven, he will manifest as a person. But that manifestation is not because he's a person, he's now there, you're following him all around. And no, that's not how Jesus is. He gave us a taste of this when he rose from the dead. Before he rose from there, you know, he was always with the disciples. They stay with him, they sleep with him, they wake up with him. But the moment he rose from the dead, that didn't happen again. He always comes and visits them. Where does he go to? They don't know. They don't know. He doesn't go back to his house. I mean, where his mother and father, Joseph and Mary, lived. He doesn't. Now that's why, and then also remember, every appearance of his, when he rose from the dead, he appeared in different form. Now that's exactly how he operates in heaven. So when we get to heaven, are we going to see Jesus? Yes, but not like you think. Not like, oh, oh, let's go and visit Jesus. And you go to a place and say, Jesus, please want to see you. No. When he needs to show up, he will just show up. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah, because he is the word of God. But it is him that we can have dealings with in the form of um. With, with a body. 
But I need you to understand that part, that that body is not like you think, it's just one steady body. No. So that is the one that said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. So when he said that, that's exactly what he was talking about, his image and his likeness. Praise God. My time is up for today. Listen, I'm telling you, we have a long ride on this matter. And I tell you this, at the end of the day, you will be glad for this word. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a beautiful day. Bye.